President Joe Biden's Build Back Better budget bill has slowly turned into a complete joke. This figure that I'm going to get to here in a second will really help to demonstrate that. Now, if you have largely tuned out this conversation since the Democratic Party, the, the House decided to support the bipartisan infrastructure bill, then I don't blame you. Because once they gave away all their leverage by supporting that before they got any real commitment or any vote from Manchin and Cinema on the budget bill, they just lost any ability to actually pass a budget bill that was going to help anybody. So if any version of this bill passes, if it passes at all, it's it's not going to be a uh, pretty picture. And this will help you understand that. From Common Dreams here, $285 billion tax cut for the rich is now the second most expensive piece of Build Back Better. Quote, the whole initiative seems deliberately sculpted to hand the American right a weapon to bludgeon Democrats ahead of the election. Yeah, a tax cut for the rich. Now the second most expensive piece of the budget bill. A bill that once at $3.5 trillion provided an expansion of Medicare to include dental, vision, hearing, allowing Medicare to negotiate down drug prices and countless other provisions that actually help people. But now this is what it's turned into. This graph here really helps to showcase that. So this from the Washington Post, the state and local tax deduction, the salt cap increase is second costliest provision of budget bill over five years. So it's second only to universal pre-K and affordable child care, which even that has been stripped down to where it once was. But you have here just a complete joke of a bill. And, you know, the rest of it, it's amazing. Like paid family medical leave that used to be, I think it was 12 weeks they were discussing, was cut down to four. I'm not sure if it's even in, still in this bill. It, it's just been a complete a complete mess. Now, a little more on, uh, on why that is. So this from Common Dreams. Quote, over the next five years, raising the salt cap would provide a tax cut only to those who itemize their taxes and pay more than $10,000 in state and local taxes, a group overwhelmingly made up of the wealthy, the Post noted. A recent analysis from the Tax Policy Center says the tax cut will benefit primarily the top 10% of income earners with almost nothing flowing to middle and lower income families. And this graph here shared by the Daily Poster and David Sirota from crfb.org, shows you that. So this is the SALT relief delivers big tax cuts for the rich. The orange here is the SALT cap increase, and the benefit, as you can see, goes to the top. So if you're making a million plus, you get a massive tax cut compared to if you're somewhere in the middle or if you're lower than that, not even on the list when it comes to the, the SALT cap. But a little more on who this uh, benefits. So, quote, despite what its promoters say, raising the cap to $80,000 would provide almost no benefit for middle-income households, wrote Howard Gleckman of Forbes, a publication that is not exactly a bastion of anti-capitalist ideology. Quote, it would reduce their 2021 taxes by an average of only $20. Even those making between $175,000 and $250,000 would get a tax cut of just over $400, or about 0.2% of after-tax income. By contrast, the higher SALT cap would boost after-tax incomes by 1.2% for those making between about $370,000 and $870,000. Amazing. Now, why is that? Well, of course, it's because of Democrats. The proposal to lift the SALT cap, which was created by the GOP's 2017 tax law, was added to the reconciliation package largely at the behest of a small group of corporate Democrats who threatened to tank any bill that omitted an increase. So... Once again, corporate Democrats have taken over the process, and that is why the bill is what it is today. And just to be even clearer, this is why they are doing this. Assault cap repeal is a pre precision targeted enrichment scheme for the corporate attorneys, hedge fund managers, business consultants, real estate investors, and other affluent caricatures who host and attend Democratic fundraisers and wealthy enclaves like East Hampton, New York, Short Hills, New Jersey, and Laguna Beach, California. They're doing it for the donors. I mean, uh, I'm just a broken record at this point. This is, yeah, that's what this is all about. Of course it is. Um, and the one apparatus or the, the one tool that the Progressive Caucus had to fight this was the bipartisan infrastructure bill, but they supported that. They voted for that 
before voting for the budget bill, even though they committed, even though Pramila Jayapal, CPC chair, said that they would not do that. They did, in fact, cave, and this bill has just been completely torn to shreds. Now, Bernie Sanders is trying to maybe do something about this, saying here on the 9th, yes, in terms of salt, we must protect the middle class from high local and state taxes, but we cannot provide 39% of the benefits of the top 1%, as is in the House bill. At a time of massive income inequality, we must increase taxes on the 1%, not give them huge tax breaks. So Bernie is apparently trying to work behind the scenes to alter how SALT works. But considering how things are going, I just don't think he's going to be successful here. You know, we see who has the power in the party. And Pelosi and Schumer have been ones that have been trying to get this in there. So, yeah. I think it's pretty clear this has been a complete failure on their part. Now, last tweet here. I just thought this was funny because this kind of shows you... Everyone knows who, who has power here, and it's not Joe Biden. From uh, Sahil Kapoor, journalist here tweeting out, Joe Manchin walks into a crowded senator's only elevator. Quote, unquote, Mr. President, Mitt Romney greets him, nodding. <laughs> I made a joke about this before in a recent headline in, on one of my videos. Um, but it's it's true. Who has power? It's the corporate Democrats. It's In the Senate, it's Manchin and Cinema for sure, but there's also a group of them in in the house that are doing the same thing they're the ones that have the power and they have they're able to have that kind of power because those in leadership either don't care or are encouraging it so clearly at the end of the day when you have leadership taken over by people like a weak joe biden pelosi and schumer who are doing the bidding of massive corporations and the wealthy what do you expect is going to happen when you have a progressive caucus that completely caves minus six people that stayed on board and, and voted against the, the infrastructure bill actually stood you know to the principles, understanding that they had no leverage if they supported that, that infrastructure package. But the progressive caucus as a whole caved and yeah, budget bills now a joke. Democrats have no hope in uh, the midterms. I don't know what else to say. This is honestly getting tiring. Like covering this stuff is is tiring i'm getting bored of this because the same thing every time unless leadership changes unless people are replaced unless there's primaries that happen it's all the same shit it's going to keep happening the people with money are going to keep winning unless the structures in place change or the people that are in control of those structures change so i don't know what else to say but this budget bill clearly is a joke